all right friends welcome back to another video on building multi-purpose laravel and view 3 application and in this video we'll be working on this settings page so here we have the settings form and we can change those settings informations and click on save changes so if i change this pagination limit to let's say 10 and click on save changes then our changes are updated successfully and if i refresh this page as well then those data are saved in our database so as you know that setting space is really important in every applications or website so throughout this video i will show you how we can do this exact thing so let's get started okay so the setting space is currently empty so we'll be putting that settings form over here on this page so for that let me go to resources um, views stops and inside this i have kept that file called settings.blade.psp which includes this form okay so let me copy that and let me go to update uh, setting dot view file and over here let me replace this with that content okay let's indent it and if i save this and refresh it now we have this form which is great point to start right there are various ways to handle application settings uh, and in this video i will show you how we can use settings table for it so first of all let me create the settings model with the migrations as well so let's do psp artisan uh, make me a model called setting and also create the migrations at the same time and it created settings model as well as migrations so let's go to migrations first create settings table and inside the settings tables we'll be uh, adding two column one is key and then another is value so let's do table string key and it should be unique and another is uh, for now let's just do string as well another is value and let's make this as no level now let's do psp artisan migrate and it got migrated right and by default the settings table is empty so if i go over here and let me click on settings and it is currently empty so let's fill out this with some dummy data so for that let me create the seeder so let's do psp artisan uh, make me a seeder call settings table seeder and it got created successfully let me go to that file uh, let me go to setting table seeder and over here and inside this one method let's do dv table settings and we want to insert multiple rows and for the first one let's say key is app name and the value is let's say test app and we need to import this and this got imported right and let's insert second row as well and the key will be date format and by default let's do let me go to update settings and let me copy this value let's create another row as well so and for the key it will be let's say pagination limit you can give any name but it should be unique throughout the settings table and for this default value let's say 10 now to insert those values in our tables we need to do psp artisan dv seed with the class and we need to pass the class and class name is settings table seed right if i press enter then it says seeding database and if i refresh this page will have this information available right now we need to display that over here on this form so let me go to update settings start view file and over here let's add a script uh, tag as well the script with setup and let's define the state called settings and let's make this as reactive and we need to import that from view and let's add a method called get settings and we'll be performing the axios request for it axios dot get 
to the endpoint API slash settings and we'll get the response back and we will set settings value to the response data right and we need to create this endpoint so let me go to web.psc file and after this let's create that endpoint route get api slash settings and we haven't created the setting controller setting controller class so let's create this controller first inside of admin so let's do php addition uh, make me a controller inside of admin slash setting controller and we are getting invalid route so first of all uh, we need to remove this and let's run it again and our controller got created successfully let me undo this and let's import this setting controller and we need to wrap this inside of array and for the method we'll be calling the index method and make sure to import that right settings controller now let's go inside of setting controller and let's create that index method public function index and inside this let me do dd setting all now if i refresh this i think this will still not work uh, because we haven't called that method call get settings so let me go to update settings.view file and we need to call this method so instead of unmounted hook we can call that method after the component is mounted get settings and make sure to import this as well right and now if i refresh this and here we have this settings and it is returning the collection of settings right which is perfect but we don't need this every information so let me go to uh, setting controller and first of all let me do plug and let's say we want to plug the key and if i refresh it let me click on settings then we have every key is available right name app name uh, date format pagination limit we also want value as well so uh, let me do plug the value and if i just plug the value then we will get every values but if i do key comma value and here on the left side we are receiving value and on the right side we are receiving key so while using the plug method we need to pass value as the first argument and key as the second argument okay so remember that and if i refresh this now now if i click on settings then we have app name as this and it, this is perfectly aligned right and on the left side we have key and on the right we have value and this is written in the collections but if we do two array then it will just return the array this one which is perfect now we can simply return this so that we can use that in our view component now let's go to update settings dot view file and if i click on this view tab over here and let me go to update settings and on this settings object we have this key and then value right we can simply use those in our form so let me go over here and for the app display name let's do v model let's bind this to settings dot app underscore name and we have test app which is perfect let's do the same for uh, date format as well so v model settings dot date format let's do the same for pagination limit v model settings dot pagination limit okay now we have those informations filled out let me close this and we have filled out this form successfully so if i change this uh, manually from our database let's say to two bell and refresh it then that got reflected here right 
now we need to work on update functionality so if someone uh, make those changes and click on save changes then we need to update those information in our database as well right so let's do that part so for that we need to create another method called update setting so let me do update settings and here let's perform the post request to the endpoint called api slash settings and we'll be passing settings values and after we get the response back we'll say for now let's say alert settings saved and let's call this method while submitting the form so over here and over here after the form is submitted let's prevent the default behavior and call the method call update settings now let's create that endpoint inside of web.psv file route.post and we want to perform the post request to this endpoint and for the settings controller we'll be calling the method call update let me go inside of settings controller and let's create that method call update over here let me do request all now we can see those let me open up the console again let me go to network tab and let me change this to 15 click on save changes and we have this access request right and we have done dd over here so we are getting those informations which is pagination limit as 15 which is perfect now we just need to save those information in our database right so for this let's create a variable called settings and let's pop from the for is over here for is settings is key and then value because we are receiving that is key and then value right so for is key value let's do setting where uh, let's use the where method where this key is the given key if we have app name then key will be app name and first of all we find those uh, record on our database and then we'll perform the update action so update we want to update the value to the value that we received and for the response let's say return response json for now let's do success is true now let me click on save changes and we are getting that alert which is setting saved and if we refresh this we have 15 right which is great and if i refresh this database as well then we have 15. let me change the app name as well app name let's say app name changed let me click on save changes then it got saved if i refresh this as well then our app name got sensed and finally let's show these toast notifications instead of alert so let me go to update settings.view file and first let's import that import uh, use toaster from toaster and let me create that variable called toaster and call that method called use toaster and over here instead of alert let's do toaster dot success and for the message let's do settings updated successfully now let me try this click on save changes and we have this beautiful toast notification Okay, I hope this video was helpful for you and in the next video we'll be working on settings form validations because validation is really important uh, on such forms because user can enter any value. So thank you for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe to this channel as I'll be uploading the videos like this. So till then have a great time and I will see you on the next one.